Today I have Jeff Bennett from Safety Strips, and we were just talking about the California legislation that will impact your company. How about we start there? Yes, uh, thank you, and uh, to all the viewers uh, and, and people that will see and read this, uh, welcome, uh, and uh, thank you for uh, taking interest in uh, Safety Strips Tech Corp. We're a very interesting story. I want to start first by talking about uh, the laws that have changed and affected our business and the way business will be conducted in the state of California. As of July 1st, uh, the state of California has passed a law that requires any establishment that serves alcohol for either on-site consumption, takeout, or any type of sale of alcohol to have readily available at the request of the consumer uh, a date rape uh, uh, or what we call drink spike test kit. And what's relevant about that, again, is that this is a law. So as of July 1st, it's law. And we're one of the leaders in terms of having a great uh, test kit uh, that is uh, cost-effective, very efficient, very effective, and readily available in the state of California. And we think that uh, we're going to be very successful in California because of that law. Second of all, I do want to add as well that... California typically is a trendsetter. So something that starts in California is quickly adopted based on results and all the uh, uh, great thinking that goes behind those laws. Then uh, it kind of does roll out throughout the entire U.S., let alone North America. So we're excited about being the leader in drink spike in the state of California, supporting their law and their ambitions to reduce the, the harm of people uh, uh, being exposed to terrible drugs uh, and consuming them without knowing them. And uh, we want to become one of the uh, leaders in North America, thanks to uh, this law that happened in California. And of course, uh, some of some of our audience may not be familiar with how you're going to distribute these safety strips. Can you tell us a little bit more about the logistics? So we have a very efficient model where we're using uh, third-party partners uh, to be able to distribute. So folks that already have relationships. The one that I'm going to talk about is a company called Green Lane. So Green Lane has been in the non-plant touching cannabis sector of the uh, U.S. distribution uh, uh, U.S. distribution model. So what do they typically uh, distribute today is uh, accessories for cannabis such as uh, uh, pipes, rolling paper, et cetera, et cetera. So they're calling on thousands and thousands and thousands of doors. The doors that they call on right now are uh, typically <clears throat> uh, um, dispensaries, uh, but not limited to dispensaries because they're also going to uh, tobacco vape stores as well as convenience stores and believe it or not, some pharmacies. So uh, in all, uh, we're going to be, and sorry, and I, I, I forgot to add very importantly is uh, drinking establishments as well, such as bars and, and liquor outlets. So we're piggybacking on the back of their distribution uh, to be able to sell into uh, our products, sell into their uh, already existing network. And uh, so uh, <clears throat> uh, that's how we're going to distribute these products, number one. Number two is we're also going to use the internet, obviously. Uh, so it's an omni-channel approach. Uh, as mentioned, uh, Green Lane again, I'll bring them up. Uh, so they have five sites that they're currently uh, using uh, to, uh, um, uh, to do sales, online sales. Uh, the sites uh, are always rank in the top 10, uh, for sure the top 20 in terms of driving traffic. And ultimately, uh, they do also have the uh, fulfillment capacity and capability out of uh, their facility in, in California. So uh, and that's how we're going to distribute these uh, uh, these strips. And and what about growth issues? Because it sounds to me like you're not going to have any problems getting orders for safety strips. Can you tell me how where you're manufacturing them? But can you comment on that? Yeah, so we're manufacturing uh, both onshore and offshore. So we have a ton of capacity. We can scale up very quickly and uh, very cost effectively. So. Uh, you know, a lot of this equipment does exist uh, already in, in both uh, onshore and offshore, and uh, they're already producing at scale. 
the difference is going to be, you know, the uh, the 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 IP that goes onto these strips, uh, the uh, the data that's used to uh, uh, generate the strips and the quality of the strips to be able to test for the products that we're uh, saying that we're going to be testing for. So the you know, and that varies from fentanyls, to xylene. Uh, as a couple of them, not to mention uh, 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 drink spike, which is date rate. So in terms of capacity to be able to manufacture these, we have a, a really well thought out approach at being able to do these onshore and offshore <clears throat> at scale, cost effectively and very efficiently. So that leads me to my next question. Um, having reviewed your background, and I always tell investors, do your due diligence, look up the CEOs and see what they have accomplished in their life. You've been a very successful entrepreneur. What was the catalyst or catalyst or what motivated you to move into this sector? So, uh, you know, I was, for those of you that may not know my background, my roots, I was once, uh, believe it or not, a professional hockey player, cup of coffee as a pro. And uh, ultimately what I saw was uh, a lot of my friends, a lot of uh Friends I played with, played against, unfortunately, we're starting to, uh, uh, we're really starting to uh, suffer from, uh, you know, all types of ailments. Either uh, they had uh, uh, post traumatic stress that they were dealing with, uh, they had, um, you know, sleep issues, uh, pain issues, uh, and believe it or not, eating disorders. So uh, a lot of them, unfortunately, got hooked on opiates and got hooked on drugs that, uh, were just not healthy for them and uh, for whatever reason they were being prescribed to them and and I just knew that there was a better way and and when it really became unfortunate was when these uh, drugs started taking their lives and I knew there was a better way and so essentially in 2018 I uh, got involved very early in a cannabis company as I really thought that you know cannabis was a way to be able to take some of these folks and my friends and colleagues and whatnot off some of these opiates that were toxic and, and addictive and, and, and obviously not good for you and killing them and looked at an alternative for, uh, for these uh, opiates uh, through the use of cannabis. So I uh, ran a company called the Leafia, which was 2018 can uh, was 2018 TSX venture company of the year across all channels uh, for all the right reasons, liquidity, volume, dollars traded, et cetera, et cetera. We did a really good job uh, getting the story out, but you know what, what was more importantly, we were really great at creating the formulations and the opportunities to be able to get some of these folks off the opiates and save some lives. Um, as you can imagine, uh, opiates are very highly addictive, and as and as as we really tried hard to get uh, a lot of these people off these drugs and and uh, save these lives, unfortunately, a lot of them had relapses, went back to them. And what happened uh, was that these drugs became more and more toxic. And I say more and more toxic, uh, they became more laced with uh, things such as fentanyl and xylene. And I just saw it as, uh, as uh, unbelievable that how many people were dying, let alone I had a family member, a very close family member that passed due to fentanyl. And I took it upon myself to find a, a solution. And uh, and, and uh, the solution was out there. Um, and for those of you that may or may not know, as of October of 2023, these test trips that you know we're pitching that we're out there trying to get the awareness on that are campaigning on saving lives were once considered drug paraphernalia. And you would go to jail if you had these uh, strips found on you because it was the equivalent of consuming an illegal drug. Uh, luckily, under the Biden administration, uh, they decide to uh, decriminalize these. And uh, as of uh, today, there's uh, 48 states right now and only a handful left that are still considering these uh, uh, drug paraphernalia and are still considered illegal. But uh, people started seeing the value of how they saved lives. And I just became a crusader in here and I saw the tremendous opportunity. And what I really saw was that, yeah, there, it was very fragmented, really focused on the unhoused folks, unfortunately, living on the street. When I thought uh, that was a big problem, but the bigger problem was dealing with folks that, you know, don't know uh, uh, anything about fentanyl, don't understand how it can kill you, have uh, uh, have never consumed fentanyl. And the minute they do just have a little speck of it will die. Uh, and I just thought that there was a tremendous opportunity for me to go out there and save lives at scale. 
So what does scale mean? So to be able to be at scales, you have to have manufacturing at scale. You have to have distribution at scale. You have to have awareness at scale. And those are the things that we're doing to save lives. And uh, that's how I got involved. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today. And for those of you interested in learning more about safety strips, please go to the following website. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.